My work focuses on a molecular switch, a protein kinase called cyclic AMP dependent protein kinase or PKA. And it's consumed almost all of my academic career. Susan worked on a protein called protein kinase A, and it is an enzyme that uh, lets a cell sense the outside environment and change accordingly. The work that she's done uh, initially was important. She's taken that work beyond to apply it to various diseases of, of critical importance. It's very important in, in diabetes, in cancer, in heart disease, and her work has become over the years much more translational through her collaborations with a number of colleagues. It was the second protein kinase to be discovered, and so we began doing chemical analysis of this protein, but then also trying to do a crystal structure. She didn't invent the molecule or first discover it, but she did something very seminal, which was to take her knowledge of the molecule and then solve the crystal structure of protein kinase A. And doing that allowed her, us, everyone, to learn much more about how the enzyme is regulated, how it decides where to go in the cell, how it determines what substrates it will phosphorylate, and um, essentially how it functions. This now was recognized to be a very large family, one of the largest gene families, over 500 protein kinases in the human genome. They regulate almost every biological step, and they are all evolved from a common origin. So my simple one was to be a template for the whole family. So we saw the first structure of any protein kinase in 1991, and this was the most remarkable um, moment, the first time I saw this, of my entire scientific career because we sat down at that time over at the Supercomputer Center. We collaborated extensively with Professor Zhang. We sat down, we looked at it, we knew all of those 500 more protein kinases were going to fold the same way, we're going to have the same organization of functional groups. Many of those turn out to be cancer genes. Um, so we had a three-dimensional window onto an extraordinary family of enzymes. She has been very, very generous in giving ideas to other people, in working with other people, in sharing reagents with other people. In fact, nothing makes her happier, really, than to hear about what other people are doing. It's a major area of biological research right now, but it's also providing us with a way to merge different technologies, working with Andy McCammon, Rami Amaro. We can actually begin to simulate now with computational tools the dynamic properties of this very large protein. This is amazing. The computational tools have advanced so much we can really validate our experimental data. With some of our most recent work, we are elucidating the fundamental mechanisms by which the switch is turned on or turned off. And in doing so, we're also learning how a single cancer mutation can turn that switch permanently on. Changing one single residue out of 300 will make that switch permanently on, and that then leads to malignancy. Even though tumors can disappear within a few months, they often come back. And so we want to prevent that recurrence. We want to develop some strategies that allow for more specificity to target just that kinase that is broken in your cancer. This is personalized medicine. She is an ambassador, a cheerleader for UCSD, like no one else is. She has a specific role running something called the Research Council. Every month she has a meeting and she brings together many diverse people who work in different institutes and different departments who don't know each other and somehow seems to know enough about what they do to be kind of a matchmaker and say, you could, you should, and you should meet. And so she just does a wonderful job of that. It isn't self-serving. It's not for her science. It's for the science of, of the university.